let's break down what concurrency is and how it can be used to make your applications faster. Take this simple code, x equals five, x plus plus, and print x. This is sequential or synchronous code. Each line runs one after the other. First, x is set to five, then it's incremented, then it's printed, nice and easy. But this isn't always the fastest way to run code. And to understand why, we need to talk about your CPU. Every CPU has a clock speed, which is a measure of how many clock cycles it can perform per second. For example, a 3.5 gigahertz CPU can perform about 3.5 billion clock cycles per second. And in our example from before, and I know this is an oversimplification, but we can say that we have three instructions to carry out, setting x to five, incrementing x, and printing x. And how fast we can execute these instructions depends on our hardware. To make the program faster, we can either reduce the number of executions the program needs to execute, or use a CPU that can execute more instructions per second. But let's assume that we can't really optimize our program anymore. And faster CPUs are expensive and they have mm. physical limits. So instead of increasing the clock speed, it's actually often more cost effective to instead increase the number of CPUs or specifically increase the number of cores within the CPU. You've probably heard of a quad core processor and that just means four separate cores all in one computer. Say each core can handle about three billion instructions per second. Well, if we have four of them, now we can potentially do 12 billion instructions per second, but only if we can actually execute all the instructions in parallel. And that's the catch. Not all programs can easily make use of multiple cores at the same time. Again, take our earlier example. Setting x to five, incrementing x, and printing x, we can't parallelize this because the instructions depend on each other. We can't increment x before it's initialized and we can't print x before it's incremented. But let's say that we added some more code. y equals six, y minus minus, and print y. Now these two blocks are actually independent of each other. So we can assign one block to one core and the other block to the other core. Now, sure, if we ran both blocks on a single core, it might take six CPU cycles. Again, I'm waving my hands here. But if we split the two blocks and run them on two different cores, then each core can actually work in parallel or at the same time. And the whole program finishes in roughly half the time, three cycles. So when we're dealing with compute intensive logic, we usually want to structure our code so that big sections of it can run in parallel to take advantage of all the cores that are available on the machine.